Hello everyone and welcome to a new video. So this weekend I'm going to be attending the Strings of Spring event at Van Dusen Garden in Vancouver and this event this year is going to be Regency themed. I already have a Regency costume which you can check out the video to that right here but I am sorely lacking a bonnet. So with less than a week until the event, I have decided to create one. So the bonnet I have in mind is from the wedding at the end of the 1995 version of Pride and Prejudice. Spoiler alert, if you haven't seen it, Elizabeth marries Darcy. <laughs> So this bonnet here is the one that Elizabeth wears when she marries Darcy. Now when I began researching this project, I wasn't really sure if complete wireframe bonnets were a, uh, around yet. I know once you get into Victorian era, the wire bonnets do make an appearance, but I wasn't 100% sure for the Regency. And then I came across this fashion plate. This fashion plate I believe is dated 1805. I'll have to check the date on that. It may be 1815 but I will just pop it up on the screen. Anyways, so this is the bonnet that I'm using as my historical reference that these type of wire bonnets did exist because if you look closely at this, it does look like it is a wireframe bonnet. So upon doing some research for this, I've discovered it is a wire bonnet with a silk tool for the netting and it has waxed orange blossoms. If you're not familiar, waxed orange blossoms are actually very popular uh, item for a bride to wear on her wedding. I've been looking online for a couple weeks now to see if I could actually find some waxed orange blossoms, but apparently they are a vintage item and are extremely hard to come by. I have also found other blog posts online of other people who have created Elizabeth Bonnet, which I will link down below if you want to see their process. So I'm kind of pulling ideas from the internet to create this. I'm hoping it'll go well because I haven't really explored millinery in a while and so I'm a little bit rusty on the techniques. I do have a book called From the Neck Up which I'll just post here because I don't know where it currently is <laughs> and so I've been using that for some information on what I'm going to be doing to create this bonnet. If you are wanting to get into millinery yourself I definitely recommend picking up From the Neck Up. It has a wealth of information and a lot of the information that I got from my millinery class when I was in school is in this book. So definitely recommend it. So to add a bit of a challenge to making this bonnet, I've decided I want to watch both versions of Pride and Prejudice while working on this. I'm going to start with the 2005 one and then hopefully by the time I get to the end of the 1995 version, I will have a finished bonnet. That's the hope. That's the goal. Now I know there is a lot of debate as to which one is the better Pride and Prejudice. I feel like I can't answer this without starting a fight down in the comments. <laughs> the 95 version was the one that I first watched and I think Colin Firth is an amazing Darcy and I love Jennifer as Elizabeth. But the hand flex and him coming through the mist, ah, oh, it's so good. <laughs> Okay, so let me know down below which version of Pride and Prejudice is your favorite. I find if I if I only have a short amount of time, I will probably pick this one to watch, but if I have five and a half hours to dedicate, I will pick this one because it is so close to the book. There's so much attention to detail and I love it. So without starting any fights down in the comments, please let me know which version is your favorite and why it's your favorite. I think that's all the information I have for now. So while I'm getting everything prepped, I'm going to let Sponsor Marika introduce you to the sponsor of today's video. Today's video is kindly sponsored by Wodoku. Wodoku is a very relaxing but challenging woodblock puzzle game. There are three different ways to play. One is the daily challenge with new puzzles every day. Two, there is a journey challenge where you earn awards along the way. And last but not least, the classic challenge. To play, you need to arrange wooden blocks to create lines or squares, which then clear the tiles from the board to earn points. There are hundreds of levels, and within those levels, there's even some tasks that you need to complete to beat them. So I've been playing for about a month now, and I find it very relaxing and fun, and some of the levels are quite challenging. Also, since the levels can go by quick, it makes it easy to play a few rounds while I wait for some water to boil for my tea, or if I need to take a little break from my sewing project. 
Wodoku is completely free to download on both iOS and Android devices, and there are no in-app required purchases to play. You can download Wodoku from the link in the description or by scanning the QR code on the screen. Thank you so much, Wodoku, for sponsoring this video. Now, let's make a bonnet. So we are on day two of the project. I got this bonnet shape last night. I'm fairly happy with it. I think I still need to angle up the back just a little bit more and make this section a little bit shorter. So this, if you put it on, it feels pretty good. Look from the side. I'm mostly happy with it. Looking at Elizabeth's photo, you can see here hers, I think maybe is a little bit shorter. So I may make that adjustment as well once I get to putting all the wire pieces together. So now that my bonnet is at this stage, I'm going to be turning on my movie timer, starting with the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice and see how far I can get. Anyways, let's get started. First up are my tools and materials from the neck up millinery wire, super thin wire, tin snips, which was a little bit overkill, and some needle nose pliers. I originally purchased my millinery wire from Farthingale's Corsetry in Canada, and I will leave a link for it down below. Using my hat base as a guide, I cut six lengths of wire to create the horizontal supports. And then I joined the circles together by overlapping the ends and wrapping them with a thinner wire to secure them in place. The book advised to pinch or nip the ends of the wire to keep anything from poking out. Using the boater instructions in the book, I created the top structure of the hat. To attach the vertical support wire to the tip, it recommended looping the wire as shown here in the picture. I then repeated the process for each of the remaining vertical wires. And to make sure they really weren't going anywhere, I added a 2 inch tie wire to the center to secure everything in place. You've probably noticed by now that I've been using some hat terminology, and I'll likely be using it throughout the rest of the video. So here is a little picture that shows you all the names of each part of the hat. Once the tip of the bonnet was done, I then repeated the steps for the brace, creating the bonnet crown. Then using my clips, I joined the brim wire and the vertical wires, just trying to keep everything as symmetrical as I could. The book also recommended using needle nose pliers anytime you have to make a sharp bend in the wire. While this wasn't mentioned in the book at all, I found using the poster board bonnet as a base to create the wire frame made it so much easier to secure everything and clip things in place so I didn't have to worry about any rogue wires. And with the main supports in place, I then clip the remaining horizontal wires to the vertical wires. All right, I am an hour and 30 minutes into the film, and this is my bonnet so far. Next, I removed the form and then began securing the brim wire in place. Now, there are two different methods for this, and I chose to go with the wired method. In the second method, you actually just wrap the vertical support wire twice around the brim and then pinch it with the pliers to secure it in place. As I finished wrapping up the wire for the brim, I also was wrapping up the 2005 version of Pride and Prejudice. All right, we are on day three, and now I get to join everything together. So this is the technique they recommend, um, and I'm going to be trying to replicate that with mine. This is just a little metal tie that they say is about one inch in length, so. Hopefully it goes well. Looking at this footage, I should have used a darker background. But that aside, it was fairly simple to secure all the wire intersections, but it did take a while. Almost the entire first disc of the 95 Pride and Prejudice. Okay, I've been having a hard time trying to film this 
because the wire, it just, it blends into the background. So I have finished attaching all the little intersection areas. You can kind of see if it'll actually focus. So you can kind of see what that looks like there. Essentially, it just does two loops on each wire and then gets pinched in the back. Next up, I need to clean up this edge. Ideally, I would have used a white wire, but I did not have any. I couldn't find any in store. So it's more noticeable than I want it to be, which means I'm gonna have to figure out a way to cover that up. The wire goes all the way around. I did add some bias binding to this edge, but it feels really, really thick, so I don't wanna continue that all the way around. Um, but I'm going to have to try and figure something out because it is, it is quite noticeable. Overall, I like how the bonnet's looking. Now I just have to try and get it finished within the next 48 hours. Moving on to the fabric, I used a nylon tool that has actually been in my stash since my own wedding. At this point, I really had no idea how I was going to do this, and so I was just playing around with ideas. So Elizabeth's bonnet is a lot more opaque because her fabric is a silk tool and mine is just a nylon. So I decided to create two layers. So for the base layer of the bonnet, I cut a length of tool that was double the depth of my brim plus six inches for ease of sewing it on. Once cut, I then folded it in half over the brim and clipped it in place and then used a whip stitch to attach it to the brace. Once that was done, I then trimmed away the excess seam allowance on the inside and the outside of the bonnet. Then I stitched a length of tool around the sideband, once again using the whip stitch. First I attached it along the brace and then I whipped it up to the tip. All right, the first layer is on. It's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with it. So next I have to add the uh, ruffled tool layer and hopefully that will work out. So I'm loving it so far, but let's get back to work. For the ruffled layer, I cut two lengths of tool on the bias that was roughly 11 to 12 inches wide. Now, I really don't know if cutting on the bias actually made a difference with this because it isn't a soft tool, but that's just how I did it. Next, using my third hand Victorian sewing bird, I added a couple rows of gathering stitches. Now, side note, if you do not have a sewing bird, I definitely recommend getting one. They are amazing. Once the tool was gathered, I then pinned it to the underside of the brim with the wrong side facing up and whipped the fabric to the brim. Once it was attached, I then trimmed away the seam allowance slightly and then flipped the fabric to the right side out. And after a moment of chaos and some puzzling, I decided to grab a length of ribbon and tied the gathered tool to the crown so I could arrange the gathers nicely and make it easier to stitch them in place. While these stitches wouldn't necessarily be extremely visible, I was very careful at this point because this was the outside of the bonnet. Once I finished stitching it to the brace, then I attached it to the tip. So at this point it was around 10.30 at night and I had roughly 45 minutes left of the 95 version and I really just wanted to get it done so I pushed on to finish it but my lighting is a little wonky as well as my shots so you have been warned. So next up was the underbrim lace. Now I didn't have any lace in my stash that could work but thankfully I did have a meter of some embroidered chiffon that literally just fit with a quarter inch overlap in the back. So I pinned it on and got to work stitching it in place. 
Again, I just used a simple whip stitch around the brim and the brace. To finish off the interior, I added a circle of satin over buckram and whipped it in place from the outside of the bonnet. And to finish off the exterior, I added another circle of buckram and satin, this time with two layers of flannel to kind of soften the edge as well. And then I used a ladder stitch to attach the tip of the bonnet in place. And with that complete, now it's time for the reveal. And it's done. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I am fairly happy with how the bonnet turned out. There's a couple things I would probably change if I was to do it again, but overall, I am really happy with this. I didn't end up having the time to make or find the orange blossoms, so that is something that I definitely want to do in the future. But for now, it has this lovely foliage. Thank you everyone for watching this. Let me know down below if you enjoyed this video, if you are going to be getting into millinery and all. Um, also, I am contemplating on releasing the bonnet form pattern for this. So if you're interested, let me know down below. It's a fairly simple shape, so I think I should be able to create a pattern for it. I do have a 23 inch head for those of you who are wondering for head sizes, so you'd have to adjust if your head is much smaller than that. But all in all, guys, I love how this came out. It is wonderful, it's beautiful. I feel very, very fancy in it. Uh, again, thank you to Wadoku for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys will give that game a try because it is quite fun. So I hope you have a lovely day and I'll see you next time. Bye. But wait, I can't leave you hanging. How long did it take me to finish the bonnet? Drum roll, please. It took me over nine hours, 38 minutes and 12 seconds to finish the bonnet. So it was over the runtime of both movies, but I got it done and that's what matters. Again, thank you so much for watching and have a lovely day. Bye. My feelings are so different. Right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> He's truly the best man I've ever